fight. Did you ever have any eye surgeries? Yeah, they did both my eyes. Did they? Him I and Tommy. I had Tom. mine done. Him so and Tommy. Same kind of deal, but it really helped a whole but lot. Did you get deadened for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah. What not like sticking needles in yeah. it. Yeah. It was like, oh, no, you should have seen that. They put a ball of gas in my eyeball, and he said, lean your head over. And when I would, it rolled like a basketball. And it looked like, you know, just something round like that inside your eye. Look, he said, it's going to look like it's about the size of a quarter. But he said, go down to your house and sit there on, on your bed, your favorite chair. He said, get on your chair. He said, and lean your head. He said, he, said, he pushed my head. He said, right. He said, is that moving? I said, it looks like a, it was rolling, like a basketball. And right there, he said, right there. He said, keep your head right there for three days and three nights, 72 hours. I said, you, you've got to be kidding. He said, you have to keep your head in that ball. And that's where I cut it. He said, that ball is going to, the only way to heal it is that. I said, what is that black thing? He said, it's gas. It's heavier than your eye fluid. It's pressing down where I did that surgery. He said, after three days, you, you can get up. I'm not kidding. He said, you're good to go. He said, it's going to start getting smaller. It's going to look like a nickel, then a penny, then a dime. And he said, then like an English pea. It's just going to get your body's <laughs> taking that. So look, after three days, I, 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 I said, okay, count down. You know, nine, eight, seven, six. We, I mean, we counted that. I'm like, my, I did, eh, eh, ah. Oh, yeah, man. If you lean your head on the right, for three okay, days, like you that. can't move three it back. Days. Man. It, it don't want to go to the left, does it? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. Hey, oh, he's muscle. Hey, I would come down there. We're going out, you know, do the read. And I'd look over there, and he'd be over there. And look, it looked like a size of a quarter blood spot. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. It and moved. Just, yeah. Yeah. And I said, that's about, I said, oof. I said, I ain't no way. I said, I can't believe you let Tommy talk you into that crap. Shoot, boy, I had to do it. <laughs> it really helped, but boy, you talking about rough. I never that, thought yeah. about just cocking Ooh, your head yeah. and leaving it there oh. three days and three nights. I didn't move from the chair. Mm. I'd get up and take a leak. I'd <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Oh, well, we're in store for a fun one today here in the duck call room. Look, if you haven't guessed it, Phil has joined us. It's finally not duck season. He's past the depression maybe i don't know he just he did like i did and put the pen to paper and saw the numbers so the depression kind of set in all over again that's it but uh you know it's a lot of time and effort we put into killing ducks to not kill them so when yeah, that happens we, we move on quickly. we move on yeah, you know what move on quickly. them fish will be running on the river soon enough we'll have nets out we'll be doing 100 different things and <laughs> you know as a company this is time of year we just send money out the door we can always say we can get them next year yeah well, we'll try harder, you know, but at the end of the day. But, Phil, it's good to have you in here. Um, you know, I think probably the number one question we get asked, and, and it, it has to do with McMillan. Uh -oh. Why did uh -oh. you ban McMillan from the duck blind? <laughs> Why did I ban him? I don't know, but it probably the only way you can just get outright banned if you're a complete heathen. <laughs> <laughs> I've been down that road. I said, no, you're not invited. But the only thing that can get you kicked to the bank and out of there and, and not to be asked back is to wring somebody's ears with a shotgun. Or, or. Well, let me tell you what happened, Phil. It was right after I was converted. Me and Jace brought me down there, and we went hunting. And the ducks came by, and, and we grew up just hunting a different way. So when they came by, they're going to tell you a different story. I jumped up and started shooting at the ducks. Boom, boom, boom. Unloaded my gun, and I looked around. There's six of us in there, Jimmy Lindsay and some other guys. Nobody's standing up. They're all just sitting there looking with their eyes wide open. And I looked over at Jason. He said, hey, Phil, nobody moves until Phil says cut them. I was like, gotcha. That's been about 30 years ago. So that would have been nice to know before. Right? Uh, I, I think I was forgiven, but I just wasn't invited back. <laughs> you, sometimes well, you get weeded out. Well, you have to remember when these ducks, when they get there, they, they're always spooky. Mm. And you work them around and work them. This year, Jay's had a formula. Don't do anything on the first pass. 
just let them come by. They come by a second time. There weren't a whole lot of mallards down here, and what was there, they were slick. So the second pass, you're just watching them. Don't do anything. The third pass, when they came over, not a feed call. They were just, can't, can't, can't. Just a little low, can't, can't, can't. Three little licks. They, they make another pass, they come on in there just backpedaling. But if you tried anything else, and yeah. we did, <laughs> we tried a list of little feed chuckle. We said, Myler Drake only. We try that, but, but Jace got it down to that, and he said, let's, let's just try it because I think this will work. So you have to be patient when you're trying to get these. What few came down, boy, they were, they were wily. <laughs> so has anybody ever gone rogue on you, just stand up, start blasting without you saying cut them? Oh, yeah, I've seen them. One guy, he, he, we, we, he, they're sitting back on, on the bench in the back of the blind in the roofs of them. When we got up to shoot a bunch of ducks, Let's get them, boys. We got up. He didn't get up. He just shot from the hip. Inside the duck blind, he just went boom, boom, I, boom. I was there. No you aiming. There? No yeah. aiming. You remember that? Oh, I remember yeah. it. My ears rang for five days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Just all I could see was just fire coming by my face, thinking, oh, please don't die. Please don't so die. So it's a pretty dangerous sport there, uh, Philip. If <laughs> So what I'm saying is, ringed ears, I've got earplugs in right now, and uh, they're worth every dime. They're very expensive, but i got them now. I've got it turned up to about two. But when you in duck hunting, you can put it on maximum hearing, and you can hear things you never heard before in your life, way out across there, and everybody seems to be talking real loud because I'm, I'm hearing anything. But when someone shoots accidentally too close to me th these earplugs they squeeze them decibels off huh. and they and they protect your ear everybody with duck hunts needs to have a good set some type of earplugs would you agree that mark oh the best thing we ever did was signed up with tetra for them things to, yep. to yep. shut that shotgun mess down you don't yep. you know because for me i shoot a 20 gauge <clears throat> or 28 i hunt a little different i ain't hunting with seven men i'm hunting with three or four we're we're bushwhackers a lot easier yeah we're bushwhackers yeah. we don't get in duck blinds we stand out there in the open so i didn't think i needed no hearing protection but I, I realized once I had hearing protection how much I needed it. That's correct. So even even for your own stuff, That's you don't right. realize how loud a duck call is going off yeah, next to your head. So yeah, no doubt. You know, plus it enables you to hear better. And then when someone shoots too close to you, one did this year. One one man, uh, I don't forgot who he was. Some guest, <laughs> but he shot way too close. But fortunate for me. I had these earplugs in, no damage. I'm like, whoo. Shut her down. So, yep. Yeah, I had one this year that made me, it didn't hurt me because I had them in, but it, it knocked me down. That's how close it was to, I mean, the, yeah. the blast knocked me sideways. And I was like, yep. oh, thank God for these things because I ain't hurting. I, I would be hurting otherwise. Six, you know? seven men in close proximity, mm -hmm. one of them big floaters, you know, just, just add it up. You say, that's that's a loud racket that's coming out of there raising up you know and you start going this way there's a man i'm on the one end the, the callers are on one end and the other end so we can watch them and so we can get them at the right spot so it's critical on when you say let's get them <laughs> they better be right there or yeah. you they, they're gone sometimes jason them you know it says you got to take them you got to try them so we had a couple of bunches big pintails this year and the first pass was the closest one, and they got within about 50 to 60. The next pass was a little further away. <laughs> next pass a little further. They gone. Yeah. yeah. They so, felt something, sent something or something. They, uh, always, they just remembered they were pintails. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's just what pintails, they do. That's a habit they have. They, yeah. uh, they work you first, the closest. We was up on Moss Lake one day. Here comes a big bunch of pintails. They made a pass. Next next pass, they were a little higher. Next pass, they were a little higher, gone. Five minutes later, looked up, here's another bunch. Same thing. Ten minutes later, here comes another bunch. All pintails. So after about that, oh, the 15th bunch, we hadn't fired a shot. We just <laughs> looking at them work around and leave. So finally, somebody down there, old hooking bull Thompson, 
Hook and Bull said, boys, uh, y'all argue. I said, Bowling, what do you think about it? We, we can't get them things to go ahead and come on in there. I said, what, if somebody's messing up. What are they seeing? We're trying to analyze the situation, you know. Old Hook and Bull said, boys, I got a, I got a, a little advice. I said, what you got there, Bull? He said, we can kill these ducks. First bite. I said, what? <clears throat> he said, we can kill them. I said, when? How, what are you talking about? He said, they're 60 yards. He said, they're flying in bunches of 50 to 75. He said, that's a lot of ducks. Yeah. He said, 60 yards, we can do some serious damage. During that time frame, I don't recommend this for you, for your audience. <laughs> At that time, we did various things that were not, let's say, technically legal. <laughs> so they said, like having plugs in your gun and such. Yeah. So you said, what about y'all were in a tree? We had a duck blind in, in, up in a big bull cypress tree. One of them big cypress, but short, not too tall. We're about 20 foot off the water. I let them off, go hide the boat outboard, get in a P-Rogue, paddle back up there, get on my ladder, sink the P-Rogue. That way you didn't have a boat run. And I, that's the way we hunted them. So you said, well, how'd you pick up your ducks? How'd you get your cripples? Because there's a little lake. I said, 22 rifle. <laughs> so what we did was, when they all fell, there goes three swimming toward the brush. Pop, pop, pop. And with scope, 22 rifle. So we got so efficient at just head shooting them for those cripples. We didn't, we didn't like a dog, what's he going to do? He can't climb the tree. Yeah. He's out. Yeah. So you <laughs> say, out. I get down, get the P-Row, pull it out, scrap out all that time, ducks, more ducks trying to come. I said, we got to come up with a quick way. That's what we did. I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm just saying, <laughs> back in the day, that's how we shot our cripples. So next bunch of pintails, ease about 60 yards. We have six, seven men, plugs out of their guns, brown and A5, and we looked, and there's about eight laying on the water, a couple cripples. We popped them. Next bunch, get six out of it. Next bunch, nine out of it. Next bunch. Back in that, those days, a pintail was a 10 pointer. So you, so you could, could kill, kill 10. 10 of them. Yeah. You could kill 10 pintails. So we ended up, you know, kill about 50 or 60 pintails. Yeah. These days, you can't do that. No, no. You can't do – actually, you can't do none of what you just talked yeah, about. Yeah, no. So, that's right. You know. Hey, Phil, are – We have repented the, since. Oh, absolutely. In the statute of limitations. <laughs> Look, all, Phil ain't ever tried right. to hide well, Your nothing. audience right. is now right. we have all repented. That's right. So we're and law-abiding citizen. Huh? And we're law-abiding citizens. So, you bet you. You, you know, know are, there any, are there any uh ducks that are, are more sensitive to flaring than others? Well, let's talk about that when we get back. Let's take our first break. We'll be back right after yeah, this. Boys. Si, you know what I'm getting, Miss Brittany? What? Valentine's. What? I can't wait to hear this. I'm getting her some new Tommy John lounge. Oh, hey, there you go, boy. Hey. She'll love them. Oh, yes, this year, yeah. Valentine's yeah. gifts are as easy as a kiss. That's right. Keep boy. it simply soft. And that's Ooh, what our I friends like over at Tommy John are good at. When you and your favorite person are wearing Tommy John, you're that much more comfortable, so you can do everything better. That's right. Hey. That's why Check Tommy. That <laughs> Put that in your pipe. What's <laughs> that, baby? Oh, that's why. I made you on. <laughs> that's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. Ninety-eight percent of men and women love Valentine's gifts from Tommy John. I don't know who the other two percent are, but they just must not have responded to the survey. So, Tommy John loungewear makes you feel perfectly at ease every time you wear it with soft tri-blend and micromodal fabrics for a four-way stretch. You'll feel the love all year long, not just on Valentine's Day. With over 17 million pairs sold, Tommy John's made couples across the country comfier than ever. Let them do the same for you and your Valentine. They've been doing it for us. Hey. I had, so I got 27 pair of them now. I don't know how many he's got. <laughs> I love them. But the great thing is there's no risk. Every gift is backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. Right now, you can get $20 off your order of $100 or more at TommyJohn.com slash duck. Go to TommyJohn.com slash duck for $20 off TommyJohn.com slash duck. duck. See site for hey, details. Hey, and I love them in my little recliner. 
so Phil, you you're you're asking Big Phil if <clears throat> any ducks are more common to flare. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say pintails are a wily duck. I would say mallard ducks that have been hammered pretty good. You have to remember we're in South Arkansas and Louisiana. Yeah. We're on the far end of the flyway. These ducks have run the gauntlet from the Canadian border. And when the Canadians, there's a lot of people go up there to hunt them and the Canadians hunt them. So by the time they get to here, flying up, you know, the Dakotas coming down to Minneapolis, wherever they're coming down the Mississippi, you say they begin to go down the central flyway and the marsh in Louisiana has deteriorated to such a point that it's not the draw it once was. We've lost so many acres. We don't see the ducks going down to Catahoula mid-state on down in the marsh. The marsh has deteriorated so much that that's not a drawing card. So these ducks, what we see are one, they've been shot at probably most for the most part, and they just get that slick. You just got to really be patient with your duck call if you want to get them in there right. Yeah. So it's just a tough, tough, tough time. They're survivors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'd, to say, answer I'd your say question. one mallard duck is about, he's about as wide as they get. And them pintails are pretty wily, but. And them mallard. gadwalls is the same way. They'll get to yep. about, they'll be coming thinking you a world champion duck caller. You can do this, do that. And they get there to about 40. And then it's like somebody just runs them the smooth opposite direction as That's fast right. as they can go for no reason. You'd be sitting there not even blow any duck call. Mm -hmm. And they go, zoom. Oh, I've seen them do it on live duck. Yeah, gadwall flare off a live duck. So, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, that's duck hunting, man. It's fun. It's a good time. And, oh, yeah. Well, Phil, what else you been working on? I know you got a new book coming out. What, well, what you been working on down there on the, on the bank of the river? In a much, much more serious uh, light uncancelled finding meaning and peace in a culture of accusations shame and condemnation they condemn you they shame you they accuse you they try to get you fired i experienced this about when was that about 2014 some guy walked up to my chair he had just asked jason a question that I was not privy to because Jace told me about it later. What he did with Jace, he walked up to him. Jace is sitting on the couch. Jephthah's sitting over there. And uh, Willie was sitting over here. I'm here. So I think Sai was there. Yeah, you was there. Yeah, yeah, I was there. But anyway, he goes up to Jace and he says, do you really expect us to believe that you didn't have sex with your girlfriend before you married her? He said, you expect us to believe that crap? Jay said, I don't care whether you believe it or not. I waited till I got married. So he said, Pah. well, from that, if I had known he was asking those kind of questions, I probably wouldn't even have just, just sent him down the road. So all I did was give him a Bible verse. What ensued was when he, they went back and put it in print, so they attacked me, and it took them about three weeks Someone said, he just quoted a Bible verse because I didn't want to, what I believe wasn't pertinent. What God said yeah. is pertinent. Yep. So I just gave him a Bible verse. So if they was going to jump <laughs> on somebody, or blame God and the Apostle Paul for right putting that in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. I didn't give them the Bible verse, but finally someone said, he just quoted a Bible verse. It, it's what it says. So because of that, and now, if you're tearing down somebody's statue because he's a famous, one of our famous founding fathers, and you commit a sin, they zero in on where you committed that sin, and they'll never forgive you the rest of your days. And it's 200 years from, they look back at the human race, and they pick out sins, and they condemn them. They ostracize them. They shame them. They, they, they accuse them. But they never forgive them. So I just said, well, let's see. So in answer to your question, 
Here's, a, here's an apostle of Jesus. Check this out. You say, what is the problem when people condemn others for no reason? I gave them the trash that I've committed in a, in a sinful lifestyle. I gave it to them on the front end. Front end. I said, okay, yep, I kill away too many ducks. I violated the law. I was an outlaw. I'm a whoremonger, a drunkard. And I go around smoking dope. We sit in the truck. I said, so I've experienced all that. I was a very sinful man when I came to Jesus. Well, here's, here's old the Apostle John. And I mean, it is a doozy. Let's see. Where is it? First John. This is uh, John. Uh, and I want your audience to hear this. John 15. Well, while you're looking for that, Phil, we're going to take a break. Look, hey, we got cold weather coming. Oh, they, yeah. They talking about ice all over everywhere and Hello. everything else. You know what I'm glad I'm going to have at my house? What? Them rumple blankets. Oh, <laughs> oh in, yeah. In case, yeah. in case that power goes out, yeah. me and Miss Brittany going to cloud up rain up under one of them rumple blankets. So <laughs> I'm here to tell you. Because she's like an iceberg anyway. So if the power goes out, I, it's going to be up to me to keep that house warm, you know. But that's. He's got a plan, Si. That's it, boy. Look, but that's plan. the cool thing about the rumple blankets. You can use them indoors, outdoors. I'll fix that. Now, they're well made. the doors. Yeah. It don't matter. Yeah, they're well made and Ab warm. Absolutely, they are. And they pack up into nothing, so oh, you yeah. ain't taking up yeah. a whole lot of space. We keep them in the truck. Totally like a little bedroll they used to put on the back of a horses. Oh yeah, no, I even took them duck hunting with me. That way, when the kids would come, you could yeah. they they get a little cold, they throw that blanket over yeah. them. Wasn't no thing. The blankets from Rumpel are weatherproof, durable, and cozy. They're made with the same technical materials used in premium outdoor gear and active wear. Basically. Rumpel is on a mission to introduce the world to better blankets. And Rumpel recycles over 5 million, that's 5 million, plastic water bottles a year. These blankets are awesome in the great outdoors or at home on your couch. And did I mention they're weather-resistant, durable, and most importantly, cozy. cozy. They are cozy. Rumpel's fabric even keeps pet hair and debris off, and that makes it usable for anything. Rumpel sent us some blankets to try out, and those things... They're fantastic. We've carried them everywhere. Keep them in our trucks. Keep them wherever you may need a blanket. From their original puffy to their newly released wool blanket, Rumpel blankets are perfect for any adventure, even the living room kind. Save 15% off through March 30th at www.rumpel.com and use code DUCK15. Visit rumpel.com by March 30th to get 15% off and stay cozy this winter with Rumpel. With Rumpel blankets. Rumpel. Boys. John 15, 17, and following. It's a doozy. Jesus is talking. He said, if they, if they hated you, keep in mind they hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I've chosen you out of the world. This is the people that come to Jesus by faith that I wrote a book for. This is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, Jesus never made a mistake, not one. You say, they murdered him. Yeah, and before they murdered him, they hate him. They hated him, yeah. If they persecuted me, They'll persecute you also. I asked Willie about it. I said, what did that caper cost us with sponsors bailing out because I'm a sorry, low-down heathen for quoting a Bible verse? And Willie said, we lost about $10 million. Mm. Just like that. You say, but you're still operating pretty good. I still got plenty. <laughs> you say so 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 they tried to do you in financially but that one didn't work if they obeyed my teaching they will obey yours also the people we contact this audience is listening today they'll treat you this way because uh they do not know the one who sent me if i had not come and spoken to them they wouldn't be guilty of sin now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. You say, 
they drag up things on people and they are called. Somebody said they're the cancel culture. If you don't agree with their ideology, and if you've made a mistake in your past, you sent somebody a text on the computer and you kind of had some rough language in there, they'll bring that up. Well, whoops, well, you just lost your job. So he who hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them what no one else did, this one, they wouldn't be guilty of sin. But he said, I've come to pay for their sins. So when you love God and you love your neighbor, you quit accusing others. Look, you, you say, why can't we accuse others of their wrongdoing and hold it against them? Because for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, whoever believes in him won't perish. So he comes down, lives a perfect life, dies on a cross that he said he would do, was buried and raised from the dead, solved your sin problem, solved your grave problem. So you embrace that by faith. And he canceled Colossians the chapter 2. Code. He canceled the written code. It seems real simple, the Ten Commandments. Let's see, he's talking about the whole, no gods before me. Uh, don't bow down to idols. Don't misuse my name. Uh, work six days, rest one. Sounds like a good idea to me. And then he said, children, obey your father and mother, I hope. And then don't murder. I'm like, it would be a better place if we didn't murder each other and we all obeyed our parents and we did what was right. Yeah, and don't commit adultery. I'm guilty as charged. You're like, don't do that. It's sinful. Don't steal, don't lie, and don't covet. I'm like, that's just 10 of the written code, and I didn't even do well with any of them. I said, well, I violated <laughs> yeah, I'm not there with you. Am yeah. I the only one that ever violated them? No. no. Somebody, somebody said, well, so Jesus said, here's what I'll do. I'll cancel that for you and put you under a system it's called grace. It's a gift. It's free. All your sins will be wiped away. My blood will remove your sin. I'm going to have to die to save you. And that's what I'm going to do. The penalty I've chosen is my death for you, to make you alive. So he does away with the written code. We're under grace. All our past sins are forgiven when we come to him by faith. We believe he died, was buried, and raised from the dead. It ain't rocket science. And on top of that, Jesus went back into heaven. He's there 24-7. You make a mistake as a follower of Jesus, you just give them to him, not counted against you. No written code. It's just, but you do have to love me and you have to love each other. Well, if you love God and you loved each other, the last thing you would do is drum up a charge on somebody who sinned and accuse them. If God forgave me, I'm going to forgive them. So I'm not, I'm not mad at the cancel culture. I'm just trying to tell them, look, y'all are condemning people for sinning, and you've done plenty of sinning yourself. You're condemning yourself. You condemn them, you're going to be condemned. God's going to cancel you if you start canceling others. So the people who attack me and cost me $10 million, you say, how do you feel about them? Oh, I love them. I love them. And I say, Jesus is the way. Y'all ought to follow him. He'll remove you of what you tried to do to me. He'll, he'll remove that. He'll forgive you. So watch. I'll finish with this. I'm trying to make it short now. Short sermon so you don't get bored and you go to sleep. <laughs> this ain't like the church house, whatever. You know, you, you go down. So look. Here's the deal. To beat the Baptist, Listen to this. If we could learn, here's America's problem. You say, is it a is it a political problem, or is it a spiritual problem? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Someone has a better job, and hey. Be thankful for them. You say, hey, that's a good deal. 
Love does not boast. Love is not proud. Love is not rude. Love is not self-seeking. Love, well, guess what? Is not easily angered. But here's the beauty of love. It keeps no, no record. record of wrongs. Yep. You're like... Forgiveness. Mercy. If I love someone, I'll forgive him. I forgive you. It keeps yeah. no record of wrongs. They came to Jesus, and I'll finish with this. They came to Jesus, and they said, Lord, how many times should we forgive someone who sins against us? Seven? Now, look. Peter said, maybe forgive him seven times. He was thinking, you know, cut him a little slack. And if you think about it, you say seven times. Mm -hmm. uh, in lot. America, I don't think they would give you seven times of seven forgiveness scene. Do you? Nope. Uh, it's no. Kind of, it's kind of like baseball. They may give you three strikes and you're out. Most uh, of them won't even give you three. Depends on depends on what your level of quota is. One and done, is. boys. Yeah. 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 So you can get about half of one and you're out. Yeah. yeah. The answer so. Jesus gave him was profound. He said, Peter, seven. He said, 70 times seven. Peter was like, 70 times seven. You mean, he said, just forgive them and move on. Forgive and keep them, doing it. Move on. Forgive them, Peter, and move on. And keep Peter on doing like, it. You got to remember when they, you got God in flesh who died on a cross. And just before he died, at the moment of his death, mm. he looked down at them, what was left of him. They brutalized him. And he said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. His dying words, you're like, man. What a what a wonderful thing he did for the human race. It's the greatest thing that could happen to anybody. So I would recommend highly, and it's free of charge, by the way, when you put your faith in God, that Colossians text, that's Colossians 2, about verse 20 that I gave you. I'll just finish up with this. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> In him, in Jesus, you also were circumcised. Mm -hmm. It's scary for you males. You're like, ooh. In the putting off of the sinful nature, not with a circumcision done by the hands of men and a sharp knife, you can add, <laughs> but, but with a circumcision done by Christ. Listen to this. Having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. You're like, whoa. That's a wonderful thing. Cut away my sinful nature. I, I can be a new person. He got yes, rid of it for It's kind of like being born again. Yep. You're like, Whoa. When you were dead in your sins, I've been there, and so have y'all, and so has everybody else. And in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, whew, I remember it. It was brutal. God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. No record. Nope. Having canceled the written code, I'm thinking, whoo, I'm glad he got me out among all them rules. Woo wee. Now, that was against us, the law was, and that stood opposed to us. He comes down and keeps it, then turns around and dies to get us out from under it. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross. So I am pleased to say, you read, that's what the book basically says, you read it, because we have a lot of problems in the United States of America, but if we don't wake up and we keep hating each other and devouring each other, we're, this thing's going to collapse around us. It's going to collapse. So please, just think about Jesus, follow him, do what's right. Love. What's the downside to loving God and loving your neighbor? I mean, what's the downside? We could one. just do those two. Yeah. Just those two. Yeah. That There's no out, downside that to wipes it. out the rest of them. Yeah. yeah. But. There's no downside to it. Well, let's so take, let's hunt ducks and chase ducks and follow <laughs> Jesus. And I'm, Amen. I'm well, fine. let's do that, but let's take a break first. All we'll right. be back right after this. For listeners who've served in or worked for the United States Marine Corps or have family or friends who might have, we wanted to notify you of an available resource. 
From 1953 to 1987, personnel assigned to Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune were potentially exposed to contaminated drinking water. The Marine Corps has since partnered with health agencies to conduct scientific studies to assess impacts from these potential exposures, and they are working to keep those Marines, their families, and civilian employees informed with updates and resources available to them. If you or someone you know may have been at Camp Lejeune during those years, please consider registering with the Camp Lejeune Historic Drinking Water Notification Database. You can learn more and register at www.marines.mil slash clwater. That's www.marines.mil slash clwater. For all of y'all that may have been there, we thank you for your service. Hey, I, I would like to say something if y'all let me go. First. Go ahead. Go ahead, Phil. So I you just got want, a microphone, son. Let I, her eat. Well, I know I do. But. I know you're feeling inspired today. The well, man does do bring that out in people. Well, you know? I tell you, you know, I mean, it was probably about 30 years ago, maybe a little bit longer, uh, me and my girlfriend heard the gospel from Jace, you know, yep. and um, we both repented and changed our lives, and because of that, I've been working for their children's home for 26 years trying to help all those kids that come through. And my all my children are Christians and, you know, adults now. But all of our lives are going to be changed because of a message that we heard, you know, that was free. Um, so when I think about Phil and Jason, Al and Willie and all those guys, all they ever did was preach to people, try to help them. Love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, all these things. That's what I learned from the Robertsons. So, so Phil, I appreciate you and all your family for what y'all have done. And that is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All that you said. Yeah. And, you know, a lot. Of, I stay, I'm with Cy 24-7. And I, I hear a lot of times when he's he does the same thing. He preaches and we baptize people in horse troughs and everything else in Oklahoma. <laughs> But uh, but Sa does the same exact thing. He he never stops talking about about Jesus. So I appreciate that, Sa. Peace well, of hey. mind is a rare commodity in America, and we're giving them the one that can give them peace instead of war and fighting and so. And even anxiety. I mean, like you said, yeah. going to sleep at night, you can put your head on a pillow and say. Yeah. Boys, we made it. Yeah. You know, I'm That's forgiven. It. Yeah. That's it. That's exactly right. Because, I mean, anxiety is kind of a fancy word a lot of times for fear. Yeah. yeah. And, and and fear don't live there. Right. Because there is no fear anymore. That's right. All, all fear has been driven out by the light, you know. That's so, right. I mean, it's a, it's an incredible thing. These Robertsons have touched many lives, mine included. I mean, I was a dead man walking until I showed up around here. We all you know? were between so, duck hunts now. We, you know? we chase ducks and follow Jesus. Pretty good yeah. plan there. Pretty good. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you something else funny is is when Jace, after after me and about 20 of my friends were converted, Jace was on a mission. He said, he, he called me up. Uh, he'd say, all right, Philip, let's go. Where are we going? You, you my contact. Let's go meet some people. All the Lindsays. We can fill up three or four rows of people that, that – Jay said, "Shared the gospel with." Oh no, he 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 made a vow, okay, <clears throat> for all the people that he went to school with in his senior class. Oh yeah, that he was going to preach the gospel to each and every one of them, and he did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and actually converted and baptized a whole bunch of them. A bunch of them. Mac Miller was one of them. Man. Oh yeah, Mac was one of them. That's oh yeah. Exactly we walked right. into the pool hall, and he said, "Jay said." You sure we're gonna be all right walking in here? I said, Yeah, we'll be all right. So Jace walks in, and and the guy that that we have with us is a he was converted. He was ex pool hustler Macintosh. We walked in, and and Jace surprised me. He pulled a twenty out of his pocket and slammed it down on the rail of the table, and everybody kind of stopped and looked. And they was like, "What's that?" And he was like, "Anybody that can beat this man in in pool, come over here, line up. I'll pay you twenty dollars if you can beat him." They started walking over, and he said, "But." That's it. If he beats you, <laughs> it's a Bible study. <laughs> and it got real quiet. Uh, yeah. And Jace everybody, looked at me. They put the brakes on they put the brakes on, Si. Oh, Jace yeah. getting creative. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. He did so many crazy things. And look, one guy walked up. He said, I'll do it. He said, I'll do it. And so they broke the balls. And Macintosh ran over him. The guy never got to shoot. He put a stick up. He said, the deal's a deal. He said, where are we going? 
Jay said, have I got a story for you? <laughs> hey, he went, we went up to the, he got baptized that night and the law came and got him two days later and we never saw him again. He had done something, some crime committed something, but there, but he's free. There's a free man somewhere locked up who's following yep. Christ. There's a, but there's yep. tons of stories like that. Read Jace's book. It's called Good Call. Yeah. A lot of those stories are in there. Yep. Yeah. It is pretty incredible. Side, do you ever think your brother growing up, looking at your brother, do you ever think you'd be sitting next to nope. a New York Times hey. best-selling author? Nope. Come Both on. of them. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I, no. I'm, I'm staring at two of them. That well, I, here's, here's the thing, okay? When he was growing up, you know, uh, and it's kudos to my sister Jan, who she's at home in heaven right now. Amen. You know, with the rest of the family. But anyway, we all told Kay when he was running with the devil, go ahead and leave him. You and your kids start a new life and get on with your with your life because he'll never change. And Jan, Jan come, every time we talk about it, Jan says, y'all, all, all, you're his family and you should all be ashamed of yourself. She said, because you have no idea how many people he's going to bring to Christ one day. And we all looked at Jan like she was out of her mind, you know. But, hey, then fast forward 50 years, and here we all are, yeah. okay? And every, everything we've got, okay, it come from the three guys upstairs, Yeah. okay, the Father, <laughs> Son, Holy Spirit. Well, the evidence of Jan being out of her mind was overwhelmingly against her with statements like that and marrying a dasher. I mean, you knew she had to be out of her mind. Oh, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> well, yeah. But I'm telling yeah. you, hey, she she seen it, and and you know, Bill Smith was the one that went into a beer joint to preach the gospel to Phil. Okay, and the only reason he did it is James Robertson was not going to leave him alone. Yeah, because she asked him, "You've got to go preach the gospel to my brother." So Phil, what uh, William H. Old Smith, he used to teach the at the School of Biblical Studies. Yep. He he come into your bar. Come into the bar. Oh, yeah. Was you shocked or were you ready for him or what? I said something like, "So you some kind of preacher?" <laughs> He's the only I mean, man. It's got to be yeah. a little intimidating. No, you know no, no, I mean? no. You got to understand. I so. wouldn't go into a bar where this, Phil Robertson no, no. was. I can this tell you that. Just to show you how wise God is. The only man that could have reached him was Bill Smith. Yeah, I said you have been drunk. I said, you're a preacher. You ever been drunk? He said, yeah. I said, because I'm getting drunk right now talking to you. I had a <laughs> quart of beer in my, between my legs. I was just sitting there. Said, yeah. He said, yeah, I've been drunk. I said, so I was looking at a preacher, and he said, well, yeah, I've been drunk. I thought, well, there may be hope here. Let's yeah. <laughs> I basically said, you know, you see that door over there? Jan's up in the front of the bar handing out tracks. <laughs> And some of them old guys, you know, say, get that out of here, you know. I said, I said, y'all leave that girl alone. She's, she's, she's one of these religious freaks, so she's passing out this stuff. I said, hey, you can throw it away later. I said, but don't mess with that woman. That's my sister. I said, oh, we didn't know. I said, well, yeah, don't, don't, don't mess with her. So anyway, I ran him off that first. I ran him off the first time. You know, you see that door? You get out, get that door out of here. Go. So I run him off. Jan said, we made some headway, I think. <laughs> <laughs> About a year later, they said, why don't you just talk to that old guy that came in the bar that night? I mean, if he did that, you know, I said, by that time, you know, I'd run all my old Miss Kay and the kids off and everything, you know. So I said, all right, I'll sit down and listen to him. So for the first time, I sat there and listened. I basically said on the way out the door, when I heard about Jesus, what he's done for me, I thought, how in the world did I ever miss that? I said, I never, I missed it. Was was raised in the church. Oh, yeah. They yeah. they had a, a deal going, I don't even know what to call it, but they didn't preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Shame on them. Well, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Sometimes, but sometimes it takes, you know, you, you got to get to a point of knowing better. And, and Phil was never going to be reached before the moment he was reached. That's so about right. you go you go back and look at all that. It, it doesn't matter because it was going to happen when it happened. Yep. I mean, if yep. we're if we're believers of faith, if someone had told me I would be waving a Bible around, hollering about Jesus. If they had told me that back then, I'd have said, "Are you nuts?" Yeah, I I, I just couldn't 
I wouldn't have comprehended it. Yeah, hand me I'll another bear. Dream. That's, that's, Without faith, it's impossible to please God because those who come to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly. You folks out there in computer land, just remember, you know, I'm not what you call an official bona fide certified preacher. I mean, I, I know I look like I am, but <laughs> I'm actually I'm not. I'm just some dude who lives down the river. And we stay in the woods and do a lot of fishing, well, you know, and run it. It's not much know. different from Jesus' day. He used fishermen. Now he's using duck hunters. He hey, uses, you know, he so. uses simple men to confuse the yep. wise. Yep. They're not yep. wise. Well, where do you fall into that? Hey, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same boat as everybody else. I've done my share of sinning. I've repented of it and trying to do the best I can do. That's Amen. all you can do. That's all any of us can do. Yeah. Well, let's take another break. We'll We'll be back for the last segment right after this. I mean, look, you think about it, boys. You say, if he's not the way out of here, we ain't getting out of here. No. You I got mean, a chance. Dude, we're just not going to make it. No. Nope. Jesus is the one that offers us a way out. The way, the truth, and the light. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I'll never forget one time you explained it simply to an old boy. You said, well, if if I'm right, mm -hmm. I win. He said, if I'm wrong, then we all just go in a hole in the ground. Who cares? That's Who it. cares yeah. what yeah, happens? That's you it. know? That's said, it. But if, if you're right, wrong. Yeah. Then you got hell to pay. <laughs> I'll never forget Phil telling that old boy that. That's I mean, it. that's one of them one of them deals that yeah. Because he put it so simply, it stuck with me. I was yeah. like, you know what? I mean, the only upside is Jesus. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going in a hole in the ground or however you choose oh, yeah. to leave this place. And you know, I look back and, at old Clay's conversion. That was a that was a wonderful conversion story. He's sitting on a plane. I never seen him before in my life. Yeah. We Clay McConnell? Talk, we start, yeah. 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 We just talking about Jesus, you know, and I was I shared Jesus with him, told him. He said, Look, he said, You don't have to try to convert me. He said, Because I just got out of preaching Benefit, school. Benefit preaching school. school. I said, Oh, well, good yeah. night. Well, great. So we just talked there, you know, and I don't know, years went by, and I just noticed one night I walked, I look, looked out there. I was giving the lesson. I looked out there, and he was sitting there. And I thought, hmm, that's unusual. About three or four, <laughs> three or four nights later, three or four Wednesday nights later, he walked up to me. He said, Phil, you remember we talked on that plane? It was like he remembered it from yesterday. Yeah. He said, take me back and baptize me. Yeah. I said, good to have you on board, my man. Oh, yeah. But it's just, just one chance wow. meeting, you know. That boy what was a at great a, brother now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was at a low spot in his life. And, he, you know, I duck up with him all the time. And he said... He said, what do I need to do? You know, what What do you think? And I said, you need to go someplace where don't nobody know who you are, son. I said, I got the place for you. Mm -hmm. yep. I said, I got a place where nobody going to know who you are. And i tell you one or other, they don't care no. who you are. That's, that's so, the good part. I said, yeah. just come be a stranger, your son. Past, your past is like there's no record. Yeah. When Si once had you, his. Once you come to Jesus, okay, and, and obey what he says, you know, and you're buried in baptism with him. There's death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, you're a clean slate. You're 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 a new creation. You know you're on the right track, Sal, because I went over to university across the river, a uh, little old place, you know, small, just a few people there. And I looked out there, you know, after a few year or two, and it, we got like half blacks and half whites, which is a wonderful thing. We're yeah, all coming together. And, actually and the old SWAT on. man, the old SWAT policeman told me, he said, Ross, he said, I don't want to hurt your feelings. He said, well, we've arrested about half of your congregation. <laughs> I said, I said, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Yeah. So we have a big meal and the homeless oh. are in there. You know, we marry oh. the ones that are homeless. We marry them in my front yard down on the river, you know. <laughs> Dogs go to bark and all that, you know, but. But it's a wonderful place to be. <laughs> Kay was talking about what a, It's a beautiful sight, you know, that we separate each other because of a race, what we shouldn't. We should just bring, come together, love one another. So I really miss Kay loves, and I love it too, you know. What I was going to say a while ago is that, look, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not real to most people. It's real to us. Yeah. They're real. Okay, they exist. Oh, you mm -hmm. bet you. Oh, absolutely. And, and we can I, tell it by your lifestyle. Well, I look at, I look at creation. How somebody could see all this beauty, okay, and how perfect everything what is. What department in salt water made a duck side? Yeah. I look up in the air. Yeah. He's a jet. <laughs> he comes down. He's sitting there. He's a boat. And then he's a submarine. And then he dives. And he's a submarine. I'm like, <laughs> no. There was some thinking went in that thing. Well, the coolest part of all of it is we're weeks away from seeing the resurrection in nature. 
because springtime is coming. No, no. Right. And you look I, out there. I've always and, said that. You know, you see them buds. You see everything start to wake up again. Forget the yellow scum that's everywhere. That's pollen. We'll all deal with that. <laughs> got to have it. You know, you got to have it. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you see the resurrection in nature every spring, which is which is what's I cool. see them blooms right now. Yeah. I saw oh, them yeah. this morning. I looked on my mayhaw trees in yep. my yard. I'm yep. thinking about that fresh mayhaw jelly in May. So uh, it's already February. And I looked at them trees. I saw them little blooms. I said, "Jelly time, boys! Boy, it ain't long now." That's yeah. the good stuff. That's but that's how we revolve our lives. Everybody's like, "Y'all, y'all miss duck season?" No, it's it's on the fruit picking. Something season else is coming up. Yeah. We got something else. It's almost biscuit time. Yep. Because there'll be biscuits rolling out at Robertson House there for about three, four weeks. Oh, yeah. yep. that, as fast as you can eat that fresh jelly. Now, I mean, Phil, what about the crawfish? Are you, you got any crawfish? Oh, this year? Oh, it's a big crop. I've already seen them. Yeah. There we go. We Ever put wait? that water on that new place where we, we cleared away and we left the big trees, you know, a beautiful thing. And I, I looked at all them crawfish holes, and I told old Dan, I said, Dan, there's a lot of crawfish out in this thing. <laughs> so I've got it kind of open up now when the backwater comes in there. I got my traps already. But where the water comes out that pipe I walked up on it the other day, they just <laughs> they just went in every direction. I'm like. We got we got some good grub coming yep. here. You ain't kidding. It's close. <laughs> Crawfish cooked every which way. I yep. all of it. Between all gratin, boiled, etouffee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every way you can do it, he cooks it. Him oh, and we cake. saved back some of our fat ones up. <laughs> My man, we saved them. So we got enough for duck gumbos for about the first, you know, two, three months, four or five months, you know. Oh, yeah, you got to do that. Waiting on next duck season, but we've. <laughs> yeah, you wrap that duck gumbo up about that last cold front. That'll be the last duck gumbo you eat. We started now. making them wood ducks in the little uh, fingers. We call them duck fingers. Take each side of the breast, and you cut it, and it's left about like your middle finger there, about like that. You tenderize them. You soak them in a little brine water. Three-day three process. Yeah. Stone. You do that the first night, pour all that off, pour it all off, and then you put them in buttermilk and let them soak in buttermilk for a night. Then the next time, next day, you get up and you roll them in sour cream. Roll them in sour cream, the, the fingers. You don't seize them at all. And you roll that in flour, roll it in flour, fry them fast. I'd say about a minute, minute and a half you fry them. Peanut oil, take them out. We season them right then. Duck fingers. It's the best way to eat ducks. The you would think. flavor that I've ever seen. Uh, Stone dreamed it up and... Uh, Duck fingers. We yeah. fried duck. Fried duck. You would think they it's were your mouth. venison. You would think it was venison steak. Right. I'm serious. It's that good. That woody pretty good anyway. So yeah, if you do all right. that. Stone done took it to a new yeah. level. That I'm woody's good just as you see it. So if I don't want to get weeded out. Four hundred and something, but I can say we ate the whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> every every one of them. We, we ate every one of them. Yeah, every one of them. Si, yeah. get me in on the next eating of those. Yeah. No I don't way. want to get weeded out of that. Oh, you out, Mac. <laughs> I, I, noticed, I noticed Phil didn't offer you a, a way back in either. Oh, he, so. hey, I, I'm always welcome at Phil. He knows that. I'm talking about duck hunting. Oh, never mind. Oh, <laughs> forget it. Well, they may bring him back on board, but probably he'll start out picking the ducks and stuff. <laughs> we'll Work his way we'll back. let him clean them first. Work his way up. Uh, we'll banish him to the dog, okay. make him put his okay. time in on dog by in the morning. Yeah. You know, hey, that can be a good thing. Not in the mornings. <laughs> Hey, that could be a good thing. That dog pretty rough on you. Right in the now we're we're fighting a, a flying squirrel a, a, a pandemic. They're coming inside the house. The, the flying squirrels have descended upon my living room and eating the dog's dog food. So we don't know what we're going to do about that yet. Oh, well, you got a problem there because there's a bunch of them in my deer stand I used to hunt out of. Yeah, Y'all hey. built that big. Hotel I use as a deer stand. Well, I say this: even the squ even the flying squirrels know that Victor dog food is pretty good, so that's a good thing. <laughs> you know. Well, I know one thing: uh, I mean, we can hear them eating it. Cat yeah. food, you know, coons like cat food. Coon, my, coon like anything. Oh no, yeah, but my wife was putting out cat food, and she come in there one day, and she went out there to pour some in there, and one of the bag was gone. It's a fifty pound bag. She's good grief! That's the second one I bought this week. <laughs> And I said, baby, I said, you guys have to stop feeding all these cats in the neighborhood. <laughs> so that night, she poured out some in a bowl and put it on the porch. And I heard something out there, and I clicked on the light. And, hey, there was coon, three coons on the porch. 
Oh, they would hit the scale at about 125 a piece. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Hey, and I'm serious. Si, you're Look blowing some it. smoke now, oh, no. son. He's smoking yeah. something. I see a 125-pound hey. coon. I'm hey. leaving that. Yeah, that's called a black like, bear. Could have been a squirrel. <laughs> Okay. There's a behind this table here. You got a bear and a coon. You got a bear and a coon. You're confused about a bear and a coon. Oh, oh, it wasn't a bear and a coon. Goodness. It was three of them. And I said, hey, you got to quit this. I said, because you ain't feeding cats. You're feeding coons. Well, look, Phil, we appreciate you coming on today. Look, Absolutely. I would be remiss. Uh, I got some news yesterday. I'm going to pass to our listeners. Um, our buddy T-Bone, Travis Turner, he's been a real tree guy for however long we've met him all these years. They just diagnosed him with a type of cancer, and next week he is going to have to have his leg amputated oh. above the knee. It's the only way to remove the cancer. So, T-Bone, we love you, buddy. We're going to uh, be, praying be praying for, for you. you. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All our fans, if you could do the same. We always close with a Bible verse. I'm going to close it out today. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Amen. Amen. Comfort, Amen. mentioned five times. There's a, you think there's a point there? Yeah. He is the great comforter. So yep. thank y'all folks. We'll see y'all next time right here in the duck call room. We're out.